What's up everyone, it's Corey from Morph Gaming and welcome to another completionist video. This is actually going to be an ultimate guide for the carrier map on ExoZombies from Advanced Warfare. It's of course part of the Supremacy DLC pack, uh, which is the third DLC pack out of four. So we're almost running out of them now. And this guide is going to show you how to do the complete Easter egg solo and co-op, uh, how to get to a high round how to upgrade your weapon to Mark 25 and how to activate the special song. Now, the solo and co-op method for the Easter egg is exactly the same this time, which is nice and easy, and you can do it with one, two, four players, um, but I think it's probably easiest with about two or three, so that's up to you. And what you want to do is just hop into the game and start, of course, um, getting as many points as you can early rounds. So shoot the zombies and then knife them and then make your way over to the armory first. And then from the armory, um, grab some teleport grenades off the wall and then make your way either through the lift or the bio lab. I usually go through the lift and then make your way to the cargo area. So that's going to take quite a few points. You're going to be into about round three by then uh, you should be able to get that by about round three to the cargo area and what you want to do is head over to this little door on the side of the cargo area activate it it's going to be about 500 points and shoot a teleport grenade in there as soon as the door goes up if you miss uh you can do it when the well what's it called <laughs> <laughs> it has a name, uh, but the clean sweep thing, whatever it's called. Uh, Chompy, that's it, Chompy. <laughs> when he goes back in, uh, you can do it again if you miss when he comes out. Um, but you just want to get it inside, and then you'll teleport inside, and then turn immediately to your left, and there will be a generator right there, which you want to activate, and then you'll just get teleported out of there. Now, if you do miss, or um, maybe you miss twice, you could just reactivate him. He does have a little bit of cooldown, and you can just keep buying um, these teleport grenades from the armory. Uh, but it shouldn't be too hard. And then once you have done that, you've actually activated the next part of the Easter egg. And we're on to step two, which is the grenade disposal. Now, while doing the grenade disposal step two, you can actually start working on step three as well, which is the weapon disposal, which is in the same room. And if you start trading that guy weapons from the box, um, you can trade them normal weapons, but the weapons from the mystery box, uh, 3D printer, whatever you want to call it, actually seem to work a little bit better. So do that. And when you trade him in weapons, he will actually give you stuff back either points or he'll give you parts for the easter egg now the parts for the easter egg are either going to be parts for a fishing rod which you can go and assemble by just walking up to it and interacting with it um opposite the vault door um at the gun deck or it's going to be a beer bottle and you want the beer bottle so keep an eye out for that you can do that while doing this step now step two grenade disposal basically what you want to do is go to the grenade disposal machine in the armory and Grab some contact grenades off the wall, they'll change from your normal grenades into contact grenades just so your grenades don't explode in your hand while you're holding it down. <laughs> I've done that, I'll admit it, I've done it. <laughs> so go up to the grenade disposal and what you want to do is get the grenades in the hole um, in the following order. First you want to get a teleport grenade into the hole and that will move the drop over to the left. Now the dropper will have a little display on it now and it'll cycle between different types of grenades that it can drop out. Uh, the different types of distraction drone, frag grenade, explosive drone, and nano swarm. If you don't know what they look like, um, they like sort of like a different view of them. The distraction drone is like the orange X with the little red light on it. The frag grenade is the little grey ball with the orange lights on it. Um, the explosive drone is the grey stick with the little blue light on it, and nano swarm is the uh, grey ball covered in like a blue aura. So yeah, the cycle for this um, little display will be distraction, then frag, then nano, then explosive, and then it'll repeat. So distraction, frag, nano, explosive, distraction, frag, nano, explosive, and so on. So what you want to do is first put in that teleportation grenade to move it up to the left, and then you're going to want to drop grenades down in the following order, which is distraction drone, then a normal frag grenade, and once you do that, it'll bounce over to the right, and first line will be green oh, then for row two you want to put in a teleport grenade to move it over to the left again then an explosive drone then a distraction drone then an explosive drone then a frag grenade and that will bounce over to the right and you'll have the second light green now and then you want to get a teleport grenade in it again to move it over to the left again and then you want to input in an explosive drone nano swarm explosive drone distraction drone explosive drone frag grenade 
And then once that flat frag grenade goes in, it'll bounce off to the right, and that will be the third green light. Now, if you find this order a bit difficult to remember, which it definitely is, I do recommend you check out the written guide in the description just so you can copy it down or just have it open or something so it makes it a little bit easier. And obviously, now, um, when the rounds end, it actually gets easier, the machine. It stays still, and then each time you put a grenade into it, um, it moves a little bit faster and gets a little bit harder. So do as many as you can on that round, and then if you have to restart the round, restart the round, and then keep going with it until you finish this. Get all the green lights on. Once all the green lights are on, it'll actually output a little data pad on the bottom right of the Plinko board. And what you want to do is take that data pad over to the vault door at the gun deck and interact with it. Uh, if you hadn't interacted with it before, it will play like the first audio log and nothing will happen really after that. But then you want to interact with it and it will take the data pad out of your inventory and a uh, green light will come on on the side of the vault door and that will be that step complete and it will also play an audio log for that as well and that will be two out of five of the lights will be green then you're ready to go on to the next step which is my favorite step which is the drunken lasers now step three as i told you before you might have already been working on this um what you want to do is basically build the fishing rod which is by going to the weapon disposal machine and keep trading in weapons from the 3D printer to him and until it gives you a bottle of, uh, like a gear bottle and it'll drop it on the ground to the right or it can give you parts for the fishing rod which you have to take over to the fishing rod opposite the vault door and assemble them and the fishing rod parts in order will be the reel, then the fishing line, which is like red line and then the fishing hook now once you have all three parts on, that fishing rod is built and you can actually then fish for 100 points by interacting with it and it'll start giving you random parts, but you don't need that yet. So what you want to do is get the bottle and once it drops the bottle on the ground, just to the right of the machine, it'll be lying there for the entire rest of that game. So that's what you need to do first and once that bottle is there, what you do is make sure you go around and open up all the way to the hangar from here. So you want to open the door between the armory and biolab, the door between the biolab and cargo, the door between cargo and the lift, the door between the lift and the moon pool, and the door between the moon pool and the hangar. And then once that part's all open, you can then start on the next step, which if you're doing it this cop, it's much easier. You can just have someone holding the zombie. Otherwise, I recommend you probably get a crawler. Otherwise, it might be a bit difficult. And what you want to do is walk up to the uh, beer bottle, which was dropped near the weapon disposal, interact with it, and it'll put you into like a drunk mode, which makes you walk really slowly and like your screen move from side to side. And you have to make your way through this like uh, laser maze. So to activate the maze, what you have to do is press this little button over in the biolab, and then you have to just jump through the laser maze. And you can see the path I took here. I take the path on the left. Uh, once you practice this a, little, this a little bit, it gets pretty easy. I started ending up doing it like on my first shot, but um, when you start doing it for the first time, it is pretty difficult. But you'll get the hang of it, and once you get the hang of it, basically, um, it's the jumps at the start which are hard. And then once you get to the other side, then you just crouch walk and just walk and make it through all the little lasers. Um, the bits where you have to go through the little squares i recommend you wait until the screen's completely straight and then walk through them because it's a little bit easier to judge and then you'll come up to this little end bit in the hangar and you can either just like make your way on the right hand side of this little box so you can jump over it and then over by this teleporter on the ground there will be your second data pad and you just want to interact with it to pick it up and then take it back over to the vault on the gun deck and the drunken mode will wear off as well and now you will have three out of the five of the lights green which is good <laughs> and next up you want to do the lost island step which is step number four and what you want to do for this is after you've done that previous step step number three all the zombies which are teleporting zombies which you kill will drop these sort of uh pyramid shaped teleport pieces uh, they look like half of the teleport grenade, basically. And you can see them right there. And then take them over to the biolab teleporter, which isn't lit up. Um, it's sort of like down the middle on the bottom floor. And then interact with it, and it'll put that piece in, and it'll light up for a second, and then it'll turn back off again. Now you need to put 20 of these into this to uh, power it up. Once you have all 20 in, it will take quite a few rounds for this. So um, 
you can start working on the next step a little bit if you really wanted to if you're doing it cop although i won't confuse you too much you can think of this later um you can come back to that you'll know what i mean but you could start working on the next step later uh what you want to do is go to the fishing rod once you have all 20 obviously you could do this while collecting the 20 and you want to try and get out of it a uh, shovel um, if you're doing it co-op, more than one person can have the shovel. Um, but if you get the shovel before you filled up the teleport, uh, you won't be able to pick up the pieces to put it into the teleport machine. So if you're doing it solo, you have to power on the teleporter, then get the shovel. If you're doing it co-op, one person could do each. Um, or you could just both get teleport pieces and then just one person get the shovel or both try to get the shovel. Whatever you want. Uh, more people have the shovels, the easier it will be though. So then you can go over to the teleporter, you can use it. And you'll go over to this little island and what you want to do is just spam the interact button, look down at the ground and just like run around the island. Try to span the whole island if you can and you'll basically dig up a little bit of dirt each time. You want to space it out as much as you can. The hitbox for what you're digging for is pretty big so you don't have to dig really close together. Try to cover the whole island. But one thing to note is that every time you come back to this island, it's going to be the exact same island. So once you've dug in one spot, that spot is done. But I recommend, again, that you just do the whole island at once anyway. And then what you want to look for is this little box which you dig up. And then once you dig up the box, um, in our playthrough, uh, we got teleported back as soon as we found the box. But then, again, it's the same island. So we got when we teleported back again, um, it was still there. And then once you get the box dug up you just need to open it and then you'll get your third data pad from it now um with the teleporter it does have a cooldown it's about 30 seconds or something but it does get a little bit more expensive each time so try to do it as quickly as possible obviously <laughs> and once you have that data pad take it back over to the vault at the gun deck put it in there and then a little short audio log will play and four out of five of the lights will now be green. Now on to the next step, which is the final data pad, which is by far the hardest one. And yeah, you're not gonna have fun with this one at all. <laughs> so what you wanna do now is head over to the lockers in the hangar area and interact with the locker, which says Captain DJ above it. And turn up your volume so you can hear uh, what your character says and it should say something about a retina scan. And now when you've done that, that step has registered and you're ready to go on to the next part, which is basically the hardest part of the Easter egg, in my opinion, which is waiting for these drones to spawn in. Now, you might have seen them before. They're basically these little, like, red and white drones with, like, a clear dome on top of them, um, and they have, like, a glowing green power-up in them, usually. But now what you've done by um, activating that locker is basically you've activated a spawn for one of them to have for two of them to spawn together, and one of them will have a normal power-up, which will be glowing green, and then one of them will look like it's empty. Now, you want to go for the one which looks like it's empty because it has the part in it which you want for the Easter egg. So, uh, when you do find them, basically just shoot them down. They'll take a lot of ammo, like a ridiculous amount of ammo. So, make sure you have a gun which is pretty high upgraded, maybe like a Mark 18-ish or something like that um and then like you could have a low mark other gun just for getting points and like keeping ammo um but yeah make sure you have a lot of ammo and have something with a lot of power to take this thing down because you don't want to miss it because once you activate that uh locker basically they'll spawn in in the next five rounds or so and if you miss them it'll take like another five rounds for them to spawn in again so i recommend you check for these uh drones basically at the end of each round or at the start of each round or both I prefer doing it at the start of each round just because of the bombs that could go off. And if that bomb goes off while you're trying to defuse it or something, um, you like come by the drones that would really suck. Or if the bomb goes off and they were in that area, then you won't be able to see them in that area or something, which really would suck as well. So um, yeah, start of the rounds is my uh, preferred way of doing it and just sweep the entire map. Although the only places I've seen them spawn are in the med bay near the generator or in the bio lab near the bottom uh, off the stairs or in the armory in the middle just near the 3d printer or in the moon pool right in the middle of the room um and once you take it down you want to basically like walk over and like just look for this part um it'll drop directly below where you took it out and try to interact like just spam x or whatever to try to pick it up and it'll be this little like blue uh sort of it looks like sort of like a wrench but it's not a wrench it's actually a switch um well, switch lever. So what you want to do is head over to the moon pool area once you have that in, in your inventory. My friend actually picked it up there and then head over to this little box near the 3D printer 
and you'll be able to put that lever into the box and now you have that switch there but don't activate it yet what you want now is you want to get some fish from the fishing rod so you keep fishing on the fishing rod until you get one of these little red fish um you can have started doing this like already so if you were doing this co-op you could have uh like two players try to get a fish so even if you're doing two player or four player or three player whatever you could have two players try to get a fish and then once you did that drone step one person would have picked up a lever and even one if one person who picked up the lever had a fish and they don't have a fish anymore the other person would still have the fish so you're sort of saving a bit of time if you're doing that copy. If you're doing it solo, completely ignore that. Um, you have to do the leap first and then get the fish. So now at least one person should have a fish in their inventory. And what you want to go and do is basically kill zombies in this moon pool area on top of these uh, square glass areas with like grating on them. And what happens is their blood drips through uh, into the water and it attracts the shark. Now you can do, do this like with a distraction drone on top of the grate. That would help, of course, but you don't have to. Um, some people think like if you kill more than one grate it's easier, in my opinion you only have to kill like two maybe on each of the grates, so try to spread out the kills in my opinion out of all the grates, just get as much blood into the water basically as you can, um, and then it'll attract the big shark down the bottom you'll be able to see him through the glass, and then what you want to do is have the guy with uh, the fish run over to, uh, actually it can be anyone who activates it, go and press the button, um, sorry the lever which you just built, pull that down, and it will pull the uh, shark cage down and it'll open the moon pool doors. Now the person with the fish has to get onto the little shark cage by like uh, jumping up onto it, mantling onto it. Um, you can get onto it from any side, but for me, I, I found that a bit difficult. <laughs> so I had to get on from the side opposite the lift area, the steps over to the lift the side opposite that. And then once you're onto it, you can drop down through the hole in the top of it and spin around really quickly and look for the shark. And when you see the shark with your cursor like on him, uh, use the interact button and you will trade out your fish for the Captain DJ's eye. And then the uh, shark cage will come back up and you'll be able to get out and then go back to the lockers and uh, interact with the locker, Captain DJ's locker will open up and the data pad will be down on the bottom of the locker. So just pick it up, uh, interacting with it, take it back over to the vault in the gun deck, uh, interact with it, and now it will be five out of five of the lights. Is that right? Yeah, five out of five of the lights will be all green. I've got to say this as well, uh, on the last step, once four out of five of the lights were green, it'll have opened up a level 25 upgrade machine just to the left on the gun deck which you can use obviously to get a very good gun uh, which we'll go over a little bit later um, but yeah so once you've done that you're right near the end of the easter egg all you have to do now is use the weapon exchange uh, the weapon disposal machine again like you did before uh, by trading in guns from the box to it and eventually he'll give you some c4 like a packet of c4 it'll go in the inventory and then all you have to do is just go back up to the vault door interact with it and it will end the game and it'll complete the easter egg, you'll get your achievement, and it will play a special ending cutscene. Which I won't ruin for you, so I'll let you do that to try it out yourself. Um, but it does end on a cliffhanger, which is pretty cool, so maybe we'll see what happens with that on the next Zombies map. Now, quickly, I'm going to show you how to activate the song, how to get to Mark 25 in your weapon, and how to get to a high round. So now with this song, all you have to do is just find uh, these little toy sharks basically around the map and activate them. Um, the first one is on top of Captain DJ's locker. The second one is in this little corner, like sort of in between the hangar and the gun deck. And the third one is on the uh, lift, basically the lift part of the lift, <laughs> uh, near basically the sharks on top of the shark cages. And yeah, shark tanks, sorry, not cages. <laughs> That's how you activate the song, and the song is uh, Gustav Holt's uh, Mars, the Bringer of War from the Planets. Uh, it's a pretty cool song. Uh, I'll let you listen to a little bit of it right here. <laughs> and yeah, that's pretty much the song, how you do it. And then uh, to get a Mark 25 gun, of course, all you have to do is just use the normal upgrade machine in the armory until you get it to Mark 20. 
um, and that'll cost you 2,500 points each time, yes. And then basically once it's Mark 20, you take it over to the Mark 25 upgrade machine on the gun deck opposite um, the vault, basically between the vault and the fishing rod on that wall there, and put it in and it will go straight from 20 to 25 for 2,500 points, and that's the max upgrade you can get. And it'll give you like the diamond camo and stuff. So if you're going for high round, it's pretty cool to have the Mark 25 on, but obviously, <laughs> Can't really go for high round because it's the Easter egg and yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> and yeah, now to actually go for a high round when you're not doing the Easter egg, in my opinion, it's easier. Um, what you want to do is train in a really good area. Now, the area I recommend you train in is cargo because it is massive. You could have like two or three people training here. Another good training area is the moon pool. Uh, the hangar's okay. The armory is okay, the bio lab is okay, but mainly moon pool is pretty good and uh, cargo is very good. Um, and it's just train in circles basically around here. You do have uh, Chompy or Choppy or whatever the call is <laughs> to activate. Like he's like a little bit of like a monkey bomb. He tracks the zombies and he kills a few of them. I don't really like him that much. I don't think he's that useful to be honest. Uh, as you can see, the weapons I have are pretty good. Um, I recommend you use something like this, either like a limbo, uh, whatever the hell it's called, limbo something, <laughs> the laser gun basically, the new laser gun, or an S12 shotgun, or a cauterizer, or um, one of those, and then one gun for point pouring, like uh, or something. and then basically try to space out your upgrades as well as you can to keep that ammo full. So only get an upgrade if you really need it. Um, usually one around is okay, but you don't want to get to that point where you've got a Mark 20 weapon and the round's coming and you have no ammo, um, so try to space out as much as you can. Unfortunately, we went down, like, uh, mostly because of the bomb, <laughs> which really sucks, so the bombs get really annoying. I would have loved this map if not for the bombs, so yeah, I don't know. I quite like this map. But yeah, the bombs make it really annoying. <laughs> and hopefully you guys can make it to a high round. And hopefully this helped with your Easter egg. As always, uh, the written guide for the full Easter egg will be in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, happy game. I'm going to go for red. Ready? Yes! Come on! Come on! Go against Wojak! 1v1 me, Wojak! <laughs> Wait, we're too big. We can't do it. We can't do it. We're too big. Oh my god. Oh. No, no, don't stop feeding Bojack. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, come on.